Hello there, today I'm standing in a pretty average trading hall. As you can see, we've got villagers to the left and right, we've got some farmers, fletchers, toolsmiths, and at the end, even some librarians selling us important books. Now, most of these villagers are not a problem because we only ever need a few of them, but when we as the player want to trade every single enchantment in the game to make god armor tools and weapons, the trading hall quickly starts to look like this. That's because there are roughly 40 enchantments in the game, and even if you only wanted the good ones, that still leaves us with 30, neglecting enchantments such as fire protection and smite. Of course, nothing's stopping you from building this, but let's be honest, it's not very convenient because you have to walk back and forth quite a lot, and it doesn't really look that great either. Furthermore, the sheer amount of villagers limits creativity when trying to design a unique but still a compact villager environment as the most efficient configuration are rows like this, stacked against each other. For the solution, I would like to take you to one of my old survival bases. This Star Wars inspired trading environment only contains 9 librarian cells, yet I can still easily get my hands on all the books I need for all of my armor. That's because I can press the button in front of every lectern to cycle between 3 different villagers in each cell. Got the fortune one here, then a death strider, and a sharpness coming up right here. Why is that Enderman here? Anyways, so I've copied the design over into a separate world so we can take a closer look at it. Now, as you can see, it functions very similarly to one of these armor stand swappers. That's actually where I got the idea from, but the two first, the two upper villagers, they drop down one and the bottom one gets shot up by these slime blocks um, attached to this piston. As you can see, the design is also fairly small. It goes six blocks deep, is six blocks tall, and is only two blocks wide, although if you only build a single unit, you are going to need some support blocks on the side to hold the villagers in place. This does mean, though, that this design is completely tileable as well. Um, just like here, you can put all of these villagers with a one block gap in between them next to each other, and there's not going to be any conflicting redstone. You can press these buttons as much as you'd like, and nothing is going to break. That's great, because that means that you can build this design in any old trading hall that you might have where villagers are spaced with this one block gap between them. Another massive benefit of this design is that everything happens during the press of this button. The piston um, extends, slime blocks push it back up, and then immediately afterwards these pistons retract for just one tiny split second. Now, that means that you can press this button as many times as you'd like, and nothing's going to ever break. Now, if you want to build this machine yourself in survival mode, these are the blocks that you're going to need. You're going to need 13 normal blocks. These can be any decorative block as long as they're full blocks and don't allow villagers to escape the machine, then perfect. <laughs> um, we need one transparent block. This can be stairs as well. Slabs, not really because they have a different hitbox. But anything that pretty much uh, resembles a full block that is transparent works in this case. Then we need six blocks for the redstone, so they have to be full blocks, um, blocks that you can transmit a power through. And six slime blocks, this is probably going to be the hardest part to get, so you might need a slime farm to build these. Then we need three sticky pistons, three lecterns, three redstone torches, one iron trapdoor, or any trapdoor works, but I like to use iron for these. Um, then we need one redstone dust, an observer, a button, a repeater, and any block of terracotta. Now, in addition, you also need some blocks to hold the villager at the top in place. Um, I just use three trapdoors and a glass pane, but this, of course, is up to you. Um, different trading halls have different designs of how they keep the villagers in place, so I'm not going to force you to use any certain method here. All right, so we're going to start our button on this block. Just make sure that you've got at least six or seven blocks down below um, of space for the redstone to go. and then we are going to put a structural block there. This is for the lectern to go on. And the block behind it is going to be the block where the villager stands on. And this has to be the glass block. Like I said, a stair would also work in this, uh, in this case. All right, then below the block with this button, we're going to be placing a sticky piston facing downwards. And one, two, three, four going down and two to the side of slime blocks. Then we're going to take an observer. To be careful to point this in the right direction. Yep, just like this, facing this way, and with a any sort of um, building block for redstone down below. This is a block where the signal has to pass through. 
And we're going to put a glazed terracotta here for a repeater to go on. This repeater, very important, has to be set to four ticks. If you don't set this to four ticks, then the timing of the pistons is going to be completely off and the machine won't work. Then we're going to be placing a block here with a redstone torch, another block and another redstone torch, and the last redstone torch a bit to the side. Then we're going to be placing another block on top and the redstone dust on top of that one. Then the other two pistons are going to go right here and right here. With the iron trap door being at the bottom of this piston, just like so. All right, now we can put in all the lecterns. We've got one up here already. Then we need another one here and another one right there. All right, now we can take the rest of our structural blocks. This is just to keep the villagers in place. Careful, don't place any blocks right next to the slime blocks that aren't terracotta. And just go up from there. Same thing on this side. Just go up um, make sure none of the villagers can escape. I sometimes like uh, putting some blocks on there as well. This needs one as well. And like that. Perfect. Now, as you can see, if we press this button, everything should fire like this. And we should be ready to put in the villagers. But before we do that, we quickly have to make um, the prison cell hem for the villager. I always like doing it like this. Of course, in any build, it's going to be matching the build style. Uh, but just for showcase, this is what I always use. Now we can put the villagers in. In survival mode, this is as easy as just um, getting rid of the lector and feeding the villagers in, just like a normal trading hall would, placing it down again. And you can press the button. To let that villager drop down. Now I'm just going to do it with spawn eggs because it's a lot easier. And as you can see, these villagers are starting to get their workstations in. This might take a little longer, but um, in terms of restocking, it should be completely fine because we've got one workstation here for this one and for the lower ones as well. So they're always going to be able to restock. Just quickly, one more important thing, since we are using slime blocks, we have to be careful with what they're touching. So if you build it inside of like a hole that you dig out where there's a lot of stone, you have to punch out all of these blocks right here next to the slime blocks. So there's air blocks here, 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 and careful with the blocks down below. These also have to go because the slime blocks do move down. Just keep that in mind when building this into your base. So yeah, that's it. This is the solution to oversized villager environments. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting more of this soon as well. Maybe even a Skyblock video as well. Um, but I hope you have a lot of fun using this design. And other than that, see you next time. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Okay, so about the ethical implications. Uh, yeah. I suppose it's good that they move. Normal villagers don't. In a trading cell, these do. They go up and down. Yes. Yes.